Star here. Welcome back to my channel. I totally look naked right now, but I'm not not naked. Wearing a shirt. <laughs> so today I'm doing a really fun video. This took so long to film. My husband's so mad right now. But it is a high-end versus a low-end makeup look. So the low-end cost this much for the full face. And the high-end cost this much for the full face. So if you can't tell the difference, then... What's the point? So I'm going to go in depth into each product to tell you guys which one I prefer. Some of them I prefer the drugstore, some I prefer the high end. So keep watching if you want to find out which is high end, which is low end, and which is worth the splurge, and, and which you should save on. Which, which you should save on. That is a tongue twister. Damn. Okay, to start things off, we're going to use our primer, and I have two silicone-based primers for you. The first being the Baby Skin by Maybelline and the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer. These feel exactly the same on the skin. I'm just going to switch them because I'm going to do the high-end on this side and the drugstore on this side. So these feel pretty much the same on your skin. They make your foundation apply beautifully. I would just say the only difference is the Maybelline one doesn't make your foundation last as long. It might break up your foundation a little quicker than this one will. Now moving on to foundation, I have two different foundations here. They're both liquid, but they are not dupes for each other. This one, being the Makeup Forever, is a little darker than the L'Oreal True Match I have here. The Makeup Forever is in N245 and the L'Oreal is in N2, the shade Vanilla. And this one is a little darker. As you can see, the Makeup Forever one is a little more yellow based, where this one is more neutral. And it's slightly runnier and it is also slightly lighter. So now I'm going to blend it in using a Morphe E44 brush. So the texture of the Makeup Forever foundation is a lot stiffer, which I prefer. I feel like it just sinks into the skin better and looks more natural and lasts longer. So I am going to use these same brushes for both sides of the face because I don't want the application to be different for both sides. So this way you can see exactly the difference between the two because if I use a different brush then it could be the brush that makes the foundation look a little different. So the L'Oreal True Match is still a fantastic foundation. I love it actually. So now for concealer, I'm using the Maybelline Better Skin Super Stay Concealer and Corrector, and then I'm also using the Urban Decay Naked Skin on the high-end side of my face. This is in the shade Light Warm. This one is a little yellower, and it's a little more high pigment and a, a little runnier, like not runnier, but a more liquid consistency where the Maybelline one is a little bit stiffer. And the Maybelline one also doesn't blend out as nicely. Sometimes it can be a little patchy when you blend it out. You will see what happens. So as you can see, the shade is a little more neutral than the Urban Decay one. So now I'm just going to blend it all out using a Morphe E48 brush. So as you can see, when I blend out the Maybelline side, it kind of loses its pigmentation a bit. It's still a very good drugstore concealer for the price, but it's, it doesn't hold it's color where you put it, like it, when you blend it away, it kind of completely blends away in some spots. And as you can see, it is a brighter this concealer. It's a little system. more neutral, not as yellow toned. Now for the naked skin side.
Now for setting powder, I wouldn't say this is exactly a drugstore, but it is more affordable than its counterpart. So for the low end side, I'm going to use the Ben Nye Luxury Powder in the shade Cameo. And for the high end side, I'm going to use the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. So I believe this one is like $15 US, so that's actually a pretty good price for the amount of product you get. You get 1.5 ounces in this one, and you get only 0.14 ounces in this one. So this is a huge bargain actually. So we're not going to bake or anything, we're just going to set. So the brush I'm using is a Morphe E49. So as you can see, the Laura Mercier one is a lot more pigmented, but they are very different textured powders. So the Ben Nye one is actually pigmented with um, a pink tone to it, and it's not as finely milled as the Laura Mercier one. I do prefer the Laura Mercier one. As you can see, it just looks more flawless on this side. This side, you can still see you know, it doesn't brighten up this area as much. With this side, it totally brightened up this whole area that wasn't brightened from the concealer. Now for bronzer, I actually only have this one bronzer because it is my ride or die and it is a drugstore bronzer. So I'm going to use the Rimmel Sunkissed, or what is it called? I don't know. Natural bronzer in the shade Sunlight. And the brush I'm using is a Saime 1.4 brush. These Saime beauty brushes are, oh, they're heaven. They're so soft. They're very expensive, but they are so worth the price. Half of the brides that I do when I use the eye brushes on them are like, what are you putting on me right now? That is so soft. I'm like, I know, I know. So I don't have a low-end version I'm so unprofessional of an eye primer, so I'm using the same one for both sides. This is the MAC Soft Ogre Paint Pot, and it's the best. And it lasts forever, so it's a good investment. So now for blush, I'm going to do this before my contour because these are cream products. So the first blush is the e.l.f. Cream Blush in... Rose Royalty. So this is different from the high-end version, which is the Lancome Cushion Blush Subtil. So this one is obviously a cushion blush, where this one is a cream. They're both cream liquid around, you know, that spectrum, but I haven't seen in Europe a drugstore version of a cushion blush. And these two are like not on camera, but in real life, they're pretty much the same color. Like, move it like that. Yeah, you can see they're pretty much the same rosy, peachy kind of color. So I'm going to apply these using a Morphe G1 stippling, foundation, contouring, whatever you want to use it for, brush. So because this one is a cushion brush, blush, it is more a liquid Base, so it's a little easier to blend out, but it is much more pigmented. But it gives the most natural finish ever. So if you're into having very natural looking blush for daytime, it is perfect. So now for the other side, this is obviously not as pigmented because it is a cream product instead of a liquidy product but it's still a very good blush. And I actually like that it's less pigmented because it's not a super easy to blend out blush, so it makes it easier to blend out because it's less pigmented, if you can understand what I'm kind of saying. I'm not good at with my words, so why am I on YouTube? I don't know. So now for my contour, for the low end, I'm using the NYX Contour Kit, and this is the taupe shade from the kit. And then for high end, I'm using the shade Infidelity from Makeup Geek. And if you go to makeupgeekcosmetics.com, I'm the face of this shade. So enjoy that. 
So the brush that I'm going to use for this is the Saime 1.5 Angled Blush Brush. Sorry if you can hear my three-year-old screaming. She's been up since like 5 a.m. this morning. So as you can see, because this one is more taupe, I keep saying as you can see. Maybe you can't see it, I don't know. But as you can see, this side is a taupe-based contour, so it has a more of a reddish undertone to it. Where this one, the Makeup Geek one, is more brown. So it has a more neutral undertone to it, and it is super pigmented, like as you can see, fuck, I said it again, it is like super pigmented, so a little goes a really long way, so be careful if you don't like a super intense contour. So I do prefer the tone of the Makeup Geek contour powder, but the NYX one is actually a lot easier blend out. It's a lot smoother where this one is a tiny bit patchy. So I don't know, I'm kind of split between the two. I like them both for different reasons. Okay, so moving on to highlights. The drugstore highlight I'm going to use is the Catrice High Glow Mineral Highlighting Powder in the shade Light Infusion number 10. This is, you can't really see with the bright lights I have going, but this is a more pinkish toned neutral highlighter. It's a really pretty all over highlighter. It's very subtle. It isn't that kind of bright, wet looking highlight. It is a more glow from within highlight, but you can really build it up, especially if you spray your brush beforehand. And then the high end highlighter that I'm using is the Urban Decay Afterglow highlighter in the shade Sin. So this one is a little more yellow toned than the Catrice one but they are still very, whoop, they are still very similar. It's hard with these bright lights, but this one is more pink. So I'm going to apply this using the Anastasia highlighting brush, the A23. So this one is more intense. This was two swipes of the highlight and it is like, the biome, the biome. It isn't exactly a wet look either, but for a more pigmented highlight, it is on the more natural side. But this one, the Catrice one, is on the very natural side. As you can see, it's so subtle, but it's beautiful. It's great for daytime, or if you're not into a super intense highlight. So you just have to build it up a little more to get it to equal the Urban Decay. So since I prefer the Urban Decay one, I'm going to use that on my nose because I don't know how to apply it, you know? So now that we are nice and close, we can work on the eyes since the face is done. So for the low end for brows, I'm going to use the e.l.f. Brow Duo in Medium. This is a gel and powder. Duo, I don't use the powder really at all, but I use the gel. It is a wonderful product. It is not fudge proof and it is slightly more warm toned than the Anastasia one. And the Anastasia one in medium brown is fudge proof. So we're going to start with the high end. Where's my mirror? And the brush that I'm using is the Anastasia number no. seven. And now the Elf Brow Duo. So with application, the Elf one is a lot 
slipperier slippery -er of a product. So some might find it easier to work with, some might find it harder to work with. It's a lot more forgiving if you make a mistake because it's not bud proof and it's wetter so it kind of blends around if you want it to. But I find that it's so wet, I don't know, that it's more difficult to apply and it's more difficult to make it look really natural. But if you're new to pomades or pomades for those who get pissed off when I say pomade, it's right either way, okay? This is a good starting point for you to work your way up to the Anastasia one. So I don't know if you can see the difference, but am I focus? But this brow is the bad fingernail. This brow is the elf brow, and it is not able to get a nice, solid, perfect line at the bottom where the elf, or sorry, the Anastasia one is like perfect. It's so easy to work with and it looks a lot more natural on this side than the e.l.f. product does. So for the eyeshadows, this part's going to be pretty tricky for me because I do not own tons of drugstore palettes. I actually only own two. I own a lot of more affordable palettes like Morphe and like BH and stuff, but I don't have ones from the drugstore besides these two. And for the dupes, I'm using the Urban Decay Naked Palette number one and the Naked Palette number three. So first, I'm going to go into the Blush Nude Palette and I'm going to pick up this matte shade right here. It is, doesn't have a number or name or anything. So we're just gonna pick up the matte kind of pinky purpley brownie taupey color and this palette is very dusty and both palettes are actually not dusty but there's a lot of fallout when you dip your brush into it but for drugstore for the price and the amount of shadow you get it's a very reasonable deal for the quality You just have to layer this up more than you would an Urban Decay shade. So next I'm going to use this shade right here and I'm going to use the same brush and just apply that into the crease. I don't like to use shimmers in my crease, but if I don't have any other options, then that's what we're gonna do. And I'm also going to pull that down into the outer corner. And then I'm using a slightly smaller blending brush to just build up the color on the outer corner. Next, I'm going to go in with this shade here as the Duke. This is again in the Naked 3 palette. I'm going to use all Naked 3 palettes shades, if I haven't said that already. So these aren't exactly a dupe for each other. This one is more purple, more blush, if you will. So same thing, just apply it into the crease. This one also isn't as intensely shimmery. So it's a little easier to use in the crease and outer corner area. The reason I don't like to use shimmers in the crease and in the outer corner is because it can make the look look patchy because the light is hitting it, making it reflect, so making it look like there's not as much pigmentation in that area where that's not the case. Now for our under eye highlight, I'm going to use this curly whitest whitish champagne shade here. It's kind of the eggshell, if you will. And apply this to the drugstore side. This isn't super pigmented, which I actually like because I don't like a very intense under eye highlight. But at the same time, if I'm using it for my inner corner, it's not pigmented enough. So, dilemma. And then for the high end, I'm using the highlight shade in the Naked 3 palette right here. 
This is a beautiful highlight shade. It is so buttery. It's amazing. So now we're going to go in with a rose gold shade and in the blush palette, it is this one right here. So I'm applying this with a shader brush. This is a Sime 2.7. So from the Naked Re palette, I'm using the signature shade, I think, which is the Rose Gold shade. So those actually duped pretty good for each other. I'm shocked right now. In the pan, I don't use the Naked 3 palette that often, so I didn't realize that it is a lot brighter and more metallic in the pan then it is applied, so the more you know. My camera cut out while I was doing this, but what I did <laughs> was use the shade that we used in the outer corner and the crease for the lash line at the bottom, and then I blended it out with the matte shade that we've used a couple times in the crease. I blended that out with that. And so you will see what I do on the drugstore side using the blush palette. So going in with this shade here again, I'm just going to apply it to my lash line. And then with a small blending brush, I'm applying that matte shade right there. And just blending it all together and blending it down. Now for my inner corner highlight, I'm going to use that same highlight shade right here. I'm going to pack this because it is not very pigmented. So to get it to show up at all, I've got to really pack it on. Don't swipe it, pack it, pack it, pack it. And then same shade that we used before, this one here. So as you can see, that is a lot brighter. And now for doing, do I wanna do a wing? What do you guys think? This kinda makes my eyes look really, really blue, so I don't know if I wanna take away from that by doing a wing. Maybe I just want to smoke it out. Okay, so we're going to smoke it out because I don't want to do a wing. So I'm using the Maybelline Lasting Drama Waterproof Gel Pencil on this side and the Anastasia Dark Side Waterproof Gel Liner on this side. So they're both marketed as gel pencil liners. David, stop texting me. I'm busy. David is not my husband. He's my lover. Just joking. He's my little unicorn makeup friend. So as you can see, I kept that really tight to the lash line and now I'm just going to blend it out. So this is a Morphe M508 smudging brush and we're just gonna blend it all. And then we're going to go over top of that with this black matte shade with the red sparkles. And then for the other side, using the Anastasia one. <laughs> and then blend it out. So I actually prefer the Maybelline pencil. The Anastasia one lasts a lot longer, but the Maybelline one still lasts a really long time. It's still very wearing. Wearing? I don't know what word I'm using. It still lasts a long time, let's just say that. But it is a lot sleeker and easier to work with, where the Anastasia one is very dry and stiff, so I prefer the Maybelline one. And then blend it out using, again, the black with the red sparkles. Okay, so now for the crazy part. These lashes are dupes, like exactly. So this one here is House of Lashes. And this one here 
is Elegant Lashes. So these are exactly the same pretty much. Now for mascara, I'm going to use L'Oreal Voluminous on the low one side. And then Lancome Grand Watt on the other. So as you can see, this one requires more layering and this Lancome one just went on like butter. So for lip colors, these aren't exact dupes, but for the look, these are the only ones that I had that will look good with the look. So for the low end, I'm using the e.l.f. Matte Lip Color in the shade Natural. This is my like ride or die lipstick. It is so natural. It is like your lips were better and it's like a buck. My lips are so chapped right now. I don't know why. So for the high end, I'm going to use Anastasia Pure Hollywood. So this is darker and it is a liquid lip and it's also a little bit more neutral, not as pink. But the finish of the e.l.f. lipstick is like a liquid lipstick. It's very, very matte, so. So as you can see, not a perfect match, but so this is the final look, you guys. Can you tell the difference besides the lips? All right, guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.